Welcome to Liverpool, to our Redemptorist Oratory in Bishop Eaton, for the celebration of Mass on this Laetare Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent. And so we begin our third year of recorded Masses. Our hymn today is going to be Love Divine or Love's Excelling, that wonderful hymn by Charles Wesley. Just before we sing our hymn and begin our Mass, just to get the children thinking, my friend Freddie Freckles, here he is. And um, one of the things that Freddie began to understand was the importance of art, whether it was painting or whether it was music or whether it was just storytelling. All these things were so important. We express how we feel. So if you're feeling happy, you probably lose, when you're painting something, lots of bright and happy colours. If you're feeling a bit sad, you might use darker colours. With music, likewise, Freddie was beginning to understand that sometimes he listened to music and he felt like leaping around and dancing, and other times it made him feel sad. And he also knew the importance of stories. He always had loved his bedtime story from being very little. But now he was beginning to realise that lots of stories have important messages. And Jesus, of course, was a great storyteller. And in today's Mass, we have one of those wonderful parables where Jesus really gets us to stop and think. So, I'm going to pull those things together a little bit today. Uh, Certainly the whole idea of the importance of art uh, and the importance of storytelling. We're going to begin with a few verses of our opening hymn and then we'll listen to what the scriptures are saying to us today. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all thy life receive. Suddenly return, and never, never more thy temples leave. Thee we would be always blessing, serve thee as thy hosts above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing, glory in thy perfect love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. So as we know, halfway through Lent, the church sort of suggests that we should relax a little bit. Um, So we have these wonderful rose vestments that I bring down from St. Mary's. And uh, the readings, of course, will help us, hopefully, to realize once again the power of Jesus transforming us. St. Paul has one of those wonderful little summary passages in his second letter to the Corinthians where he gets us to realise that we are new creations, and we are. That's what we think about. Our baptism makes us a new creation, uh, ready and living already the eternal life that God has won for us. Today we pause for a moment and begin our Mass by praying that the Lord will forgive us our sins so that we can celebrate worthily. And with the rest of the world, we're still weighed down heavily with the sadness of what is going on in Eastern Europe, but... There may be the odd glimmer of hope that perhaps things are moving on and that some of this terrible war will uh, cease. Let's pray that that will be so. We know that, I'm recording this as you know, on Saturday afternoon, so just yesterday evening, Pope Francis dedicated both countries, Russia and Ukraine, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We'll beg Mary's prayers again during our Mass today. So I'll leave you for a few moments to bring yourself lovingly to our Lord that he may forgive and heal. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, 
in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have taken the shame of Egypt away from you. The Israelites pitched their camp at Gilgal and kept the Passover there on the 14th day of the month, at evening, in the plain of Jericho. On the morrow of the Passover they tasted the produce of that country, unleavened bread and roasted ears of corn that same day. From that time, from their first eating of the produce of that country, the manna stopped falling. And having no manna, and having manna no longer, the Israelites fed from that year onwards on what the land of Canaan yielded. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me, from all my terrors he set me free. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him, and rescued him from all his distress. Taste and see that the Lord is good. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For anyone who is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old creation is gone, and now the new one is here. It is all God's work. It was God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the work of handing on this reconciliation. In other words, God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself, not holding people's faults against them. And he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. So we are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appearing through us. And the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ. King of eternal glory. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. This must be one of the most famous of all the stories, the parables that Jesus told. The tax collectors and sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained. This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. 
A man had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that would come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine, and now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants, who put him on his farm to feed the pigs. And he would willingly have filled his belly with the husks the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's paid servants have more food than they want? And here am I, dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms, and kissed him tenderly. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the, so but the father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we have been fattening and kill it. We are going to have a feast, a celebration, because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now the elder son was out in the fields, and on his way back, as he drew near the house, he could hear music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come, replied the servant, and your father has killed the calf we had fattened, because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry then, and refused to go in. And his father came out to plead with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you, and never once disobeyed your orders. Yet you never offered me so much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his women, you kill the calf we had been fattening. The father said, My son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours. But it is only right we should celebrate and rejoice, because your brother here was dead, and has come to life. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, many of you have heard me reflect on this wonderful parable on many occasions, particularly when we've had reconciliation services, and of course we'll be having them again uh, the week after this coming week. Uh, one of the things I've often drawn attention to is that marvellous meditation on this uh, whole uh, story, um, linked with the famous painting of the prodigal son returning to the father by Rembrandt. And, uh, well, many people have reflected on it, um, but Henry Nouwen particularly spoke about how it transformed his life, how he sat and meditated on this, sitting in front of the original painting, and then he wrote his book about it. I think one of the most marvellous things about that book is that he leads us through the story, opens it up to us in a wholly wonderful way, uh, reminds us that uh, perhaps we can see ourselves in both the sons, really, um, times when we just push off and do our own thing, other times when we feel grumpy and feel that nobody appreciates us. And he leads us on from that. Yes, Jesus wants us to recognize that side of ourselves and bring it to him to be healed. But ultimately, 
what Jesus is saying to us is that we must be like the Father. We've got to be the Father now. And that's what Paul is saying to us. We are ambassadors for Christ. Isn't that a wonderful... Paul saying to us, look, we are transformed. Um, we are recreated. We're new creations. And we have a huge job of work to do as Jesus' followers in today's world. To take this message once again to heart and then proclaim it wherever we get the opportunity. And so once again, I, I thank God. I thank God for you who are joining me for this Mass, for all the parishioners that I have the wonderful privilege of sharing my life with. You know, um, we're always learning something new. And Anne O'Neill, our administrator in St. Mary's, sent me a beautiful meditation on this Gospel just two days ago. Uh, or possibly yesterday, <laughs> come to think of it. It was yesterday morning, I think. She sent it through to me. Um, and this uh, is a meditation by uh, a Jesuit, uh, a Jesuit priest uh, called Frank, uh, so, sorry, called Jeff Wheaton, Jeff Wheaton. And Jeff is using not Rembrandt's picture, though he refers to it, but somebody called Frank Wesley. I think uh, Frank Wesley was a, an Austra Indian, Australian, um, a beautiful painter, and he's got the most compelling picture of the return of the prodigal son. Um, now, I think you may be able to find a link uh, to that uh, with this Mass. Uh, but if not, if you just go, in, go on and look up that name, Frank Wesley, so the same as the uh, author of our hymn, but obviously not the same person, the same surname, Wesley, uh, and Frank, and uh, artist, and you, you probably will find uh, the copy I did anyway when I went on the uh, internet just before I came up to celebrate this Mass. And if you are able to listen... Um, to Jeff's uh, meditation, he's a Jesuit priest, um, how compelling he found this piece of art, then you'll understand why I introduced the Mass today, talking about the power of art, the power of music, the power of painting, the wonder, say, of the icons that we have, um, and, of course, the power of storytelling, how Jesus gets to us, touches us, strengthens us. I'm very conscious, too, that uh, we're celebrating uh, Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday, and uh, I'd like to greet all the mums today and thank you for your good example uh, and your tenderness. I think this icon of Our Lady of Tenderness makes me think of uh, all the different gifts that we have, but very often women are able, mothers particularly, to bring that tenderness to situations, which perhaps those of us uh, who are men uh, don't always find so easy to do. We're learning, I think, a little bit these days, but uh, let's thank God for all the different gifts, how they complement one another, how they build a family up. Um, so let's hope our mothers have a, a wonderful day, and let's hope, too, that with the intercession of our Blessed Lady, peace may come to our world. So we're going to make our act of faith and then offer our prayers of intercession. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the faith that brings us together to celebrate your loving presence in the presence of Jesus, your Son. And so we ask you, Lord, to watch over our world. We pray your blessing on Pope Francis as he tries to lead the Church and also influence the wider world. We pray for our Archbishop Malcolm, and for all those entrusted with service in the community and in the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who are suffering so severely at the moment, particularly in Ukraine. We pray for those who've died that they may have eternal rest, and for those who are striving to bring relief from all over the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our two parishes, as usual, we have a number of intentions. I'd like you to remember those who are housebound 
and still struggling, to those who are still struggling with the virus, which seems to have taken off again in uh, many places, perhaps not with the severity of before, but nevertheless um, being a real uh, nuisance. So we ask the Lord to heal those who are suffering and to strengthen us all, um, and to pray that we will continue to be respectful and caring of one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd ask you to remember uh, a couple of sick people that we've been praying for, Anne Houghton and Breeder Waters. But as I say, we remember all those who are housebound or in hospital or the hospice or at home suffering. Lord, we ask you to heal and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we've a number of funerals coming up uh, in this coming week. On Monday, Francis O'Brien, and on Tuesday, Andrew O'Keefe, and then Margaret Hudson. And uh, the following week, we have the funerals of Ronald Murray and Pat Holloran. And uh, the following week uh, from that, we have the funeral of Mary Taylor. We also remember John Moon, Noon, recently dead, and Charlotte, the uh, sister of Alex Griffiths. Could I ask you too to remember those whose anniversaries occur around this time? Mary Fitzpatrick today, Ronald John Pimlot, Philomena Pimlot, Henrietta Gibbons, Arthur Ferguson, and Anne Peter Sweeney, whose anniversary would be a wedding anniversary on April the 1st. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And let's beg the prayers of our Blessed Lady for all these intentions and for peace in our world. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we place all these intentions, all the intentions beneath our altar, and we pray that your Son Jesus may present them to you during this Mass on our behalf. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ, who is our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that, waited in dark, that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross, for by your cross, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we rejoice as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now... Let's greet each other with a sign of peace, praying that the Lord's peace will bless each one of us and our homes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 
I pray may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Let's just pray our spiritual communion for those of you who are joining us from wherever for this Mass. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in Holy Communion. I love you and would love to receive you now, but since this is not possible, please come to me and fill me with all the blessings and graces I need to cope with everything that is going on. Unite us all and give us the peace which you promised only you can give. Amen. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. You are my Lord. Thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. You are my Lord. Praise you. Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, I praise you. You are my Lord. Let us pray. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So by way of notices this week, could I just mention that uh, the masses will be at the usual times, alternate days, uh, at 12 o'clock. Um, but just for those uh, funerals, that you be aware that there is uh, an extra mass on Monday at St. Mary's, a funeral at 12 o'clock. Uh, for Francis O'Brien. Uh, and then on Tuesday, um, there will be the usual 12 o'clock Mass at St. Mary's, and a, a funeral later than that then at uh, half past one after the 12 o'clock. So, uh, and that funeral will be for Margaret Hudson. Uh, and the funeral here uh, on Tuesday, there won't be a 12 o'clock Mass, of course, uh, is at actually at quarter to 12, the funeral of Andrew O'Keefe, just the young man of 34. So do pray for families um, and friends who are grieving their loved ones. And uh, for the rest, I can only thank you again for the terrific response uh, to our confreres in Ukraine. Things, uh, well, we got a lovely letter back. I did read that on uh, Thursday in my message, or uh, Wednesday evening for my message. And um, so many of you have heard that from Father Andre. And uh, we'll continue to keep in touch and keep you informed on that front. I haven't had any news back regarding possible refugees coming, but again, we'll keep you informed. And if there are other people who would be interested, uh, perhaps you could let me know, just gently, as I say, that these things do seem to be taking quite a bit of time. Um, there we are. We'll leave it there and uh, hope you have a, a blessed week and that you enjoy this remarkable spell of weather. And once again, uh, mums have a wonderful day. And if you're watching this Mass on Saturday evening, whatever you do, don't forget to put your clocks forward for an hour in readiness for tomorrow for uh, summertime. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. 
Thanks be to God. We'll sing the last two verses of our hymn. Finish then thy new creation, pure and sinless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation, perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise.